So when we left it last time, we were able to um, <clears throat> write user values to our um, uh, uh, objects in Lua. So that was when, uh, if you had uh, an object that we bound, a user datum that we bound to Lua, someone was able to put um, values onto that that didn't exist on the native object. So that was pretty cool, but we didn't actually handle the case where we did actually want the person to write to the native property. So if I did something like that, so this sprite object that we've mapped, if I try and uh, map the value, uh, put the value 10 onto X, which is just a value on our sprite here. So I want this X to get written when that happens. Um, that doesn't actually work yet because we never wrote the code to do it. So I'll just draw that again down there. And we left ourselves with a to do um, just to show that that didn't work. Yeah, need to write native property X on type sprite. So that's what we've not handled. So when this X uh, gets written to, when the 10 gets written, um, there is no X on this um, on this sprite object in Lua. So the new index meta method gets invoked because that's what gets invoked when you're trying to write to a value that doesn't exist. And in there, we, we map that to a C function, um, which is here. We called it new index user datum. Uh, and there's the values that that are being uh, that we're, we're just checking are coming out of Lua. So we get the user datum, which is one of our RTTR variants that we've mapped to runtime type information. Uh, X would be there, the string, the name of the thing you're trying to access. In this case, it's X. And the third value on the stack in this case is the value we're trying to write into it. So in that case, it would be a number and it would be 10. Um, so we used the name, so the, the, the string name, and we got the property. Um, the runtime type information about what is that we're trying to access. And if that is valid, that means it's something we do need to write back to the native object. So that's why we've got our to do here. So we need to write that value back here. So the first thing we should probably do um, is get the Lua type. So uh, we can do that with Lua type and it's the third value on the stack. Oops, that's not int. That's still not int. So that'll tell us if it's a number or if it's a table or whatever. Uh, and then we should be able to switch on that. Uh, switch on that with type. Um, if, if we don't know what the type is, we're going to put an error in. It's going to be there. And if we do know, we, we want to handle the number case first. That's the only one we're, we're interested in at the moment. Uh, anything in these Lua underscore, Lua underscore T, uh, you should be able to find out, is that thing a number? So we're just detecting that the thing on the stack is actually a number, and then we can handle it as a number. Because remember, we've got to do some conversion, because C++ has loads of different number types, like short, int, and long, and all that kind of stuff. But Lua only has one. Um, but when we use this runtime type information, this one in particular, when we write this value back, we've got to convert it to the right thing to be written back. So it's quite important that we handle that here. So number's quite going to be a reasonably complicated one just for that reason. Um, so once we've got the number, uh, what do we need to do next? Um, we need to find out uh, what is the type? So the property that we're trying to write to in, in this in the example case would have been X. We need to know what what is the type of that property. Um, so we can say is property get type. So we can get the type of the property, uh, and then we can just ask is that type an RTTR type? Uh, we can get the int type. So it's kind of similar to what we did before when we were calling methods and passing the parameters along. Um, so we're just working out, is that an integer type or an int type? And if it is, well, we can cast that number to an int, uh, the one that's on the stack. Um, it's at position three on the stack. Um, and then we can set that value. So the property has a set value function. So to set this value, we need the instance, the object that we're setting the value on, and the argument. So we don't have the instance yet, but do have the value. So this would set the, so the property is the X, and the instance object is an instance of sprite. So we need to get that, and that's that's going to be, the instance object is our variant. So that is on the stack at the first position, and it's a user datum. Uh, that's at position one. And it's an RTTR variant. 
So we just cast that and I'll dereference it. Because all of our user datums that we're making are, are are TTR variants. So we know that that's one of those. So we can pass that in there. So that should set our, um, when it's a number and, and, and we're assigning that to X, that should set it correctly because X is an integer. So that should be okay. Uh, I think, I believe this set value uh, returns a bool, return value indicates where the operation was successful. So let's just assert there just to make sure that that was a success. And if it's not an in, we've got to handle other cases as well, but we need another error there. So let's just stick an error at that, stick that error in there for now. We'll tidy those errors up later. But let's just see if that works. And there we go. So I did set the, uh, let's have a look at the script. Yeah, so I, I, I wanted to set the X value to 10 and then I just drew the sprite again and it looks like that's working because the X value has magically changed to 10 uh, and we've done really well there. So that looks like that's what we needed to do to get this working. Of course, we've only handled numbers and we've only handled the integer type. If it's anything else, we'll get an error. So let's just, um, let's handle the error where, let's just tidy up the errors and uh, and then we're basically done. Um, let's handle the error where we do, it wasn't a number. Let's try and set this to a table because that just won't work. Yeah, we're trying to set, whoop, trying to set sprite x to a table and that's not what we should be able to do. So, yeah, so we've got our error it says to do. We need to tidy up that error message. So let's do that. Um, so this is cannot set the value. Uh, on this type. Cannot set the value on this type. Uh, we didn't recognize the lure type. So let's just see, is this right? Cannot set the value and the field name would be like X on this type, which would be Sprite. We didn't recognize the lure type, so we need to put the lure type in there. So you can, there is a thing in lure to do type name which will give you the name of a type if you if you know the index to it, which we do, not the index, the, just the, just the, I suppose it is an index. Like there's, there's one, there's just a value for number. So number is three. So that should just give us the name. So that should say table. Cannot set, that should say, cannot set the value X on this type sprite. We didn't recognize the lower type table. Let's just see if that works. So we're just cleaning up the errors a bit when this goes wrong. Cannot set the value X on this type sprite. We didn't recognize the lower type table. So that's exactly the error we wanted. So let's set this back to a number and let's see what happens if it's a, if it's a number that we don't recognize. So I'm gonna change this sprite X to a short because we haven't handled that. I think I need to change that move value to a short as well so it doesn't complain about the types. Let's see what it does then. So we should get an error. Yeah, so it still says to do, we need to write native property X on Sprite. That's almost the error we want, but not quite. It's not to do anymore. Now it's a proper error. Um, let's find the error. So uh, let's just see, what what is this error message? It's cannot set the value on this type. So it's pretty much the same as before. This type, uh, so we didn't, uh, we didn't recognize the native type. So, cannot set the value, so it would be X on this type sprite. We didn't recognize the native type. So we need the name of the native type that we didn't recognize. Uh, so that's the property, get type, get name string and to a C string. So that would say, cannot set the value X on this type sprite. We didn't recognize the native type uh, short. That's what it should say. Um, 
So let's just see how that works. See if that's what we wanted. Can I set the value X on this type sprite? We didn't recognize the native type short. So that's a pretty good error message. Um, now let's actually handle the error. So this would be here. We've handled int and it's pretty much the same thing to handle short as well. We've just got to say, is this a short? And let's turn it into, cast it to a short. And here's a short. And same thing again, just set the value. So we're only handling number cases, but at least we want this to be handled correctly. And there it is, so it got set to 10. So that is pretty much done, except one last thing. If this property has been handled down here, uh, we actually want to exit there because it's handled correctly. Exit and say there's nothing on the stack. And if it, if it doesn't go into that, then it, it just goes through to the user value instead. So let's just check that still works. It looks fine. So that's all good. So just wrapping that up then, we, ha we actually have what is a reason, well, it's a reasonable binding for Lua. We're using the runtime type information. We've got global methods. We can we can read and write native values as long as they're an int or a short. We can call methods on, on uh, classes as, as long as they've got int and short parameters or no parameters. We can get the return values. Uh, and we can even write values onto there that, that just don't even exist and they can be picked up and saved for later on by the person doing the script. So that's a pretty good binding. Uh, it's not complete, but you're getting the idea. This is how you how you work your way through it. So um, I'm not sure what we'll do next time, but I will catch you for that one.